Okay, yes, yeah, everyone, welcome to your next online lesson. Uh, today's lesson is all about pitch notation, so let's get straight into it. Um, we're going to start with a spiral starter. Now, a spiral starter is something you know, we've looked at in the past, and we're going to review. Okay, so the main thing we learned last lesson was notes on the keyboard. So the next thing you're going to see is a video of me playing notes on the keyboard, and you've got to identify which note I'm playing. Okay, so the thing to remember here is that C is to the left of the two black keys, and you should be ready to work the rest out from there. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you how to open up a Google Docs file at home. So um, that's the first thing we'll do. So if I leave this, I'll show you where to go to make a, find a Google Docs thing. So you've got your classroom, it looks like this, and you're going to press the nine dots in the top right hand corner of the shape like a square. And you're going to go to Google Docs, which is on the second line and in the middle. When you open it, you're going to open up a blank one, which is represented by this colourful cross um, here. So once you click on that, you're then going to create a title called Spiral Starter. And we're going to have 10 questions. OK, so let's put numbers 1 to 10 going down the page. And you are ready to start okay so now you're going to see a video of me playing those notes and you are going to answer those questions you probably have to pause between the video and uh, your documents um, so you can write in the answer um, but you'll need to do that and answer the next 10 questions remember there is two names for the black keys can you name both of them that will really impress me if you can okay so you start on that and I'll join you back here for the answers So you've completed the spiral starter and you're now ready for the answer. So here we go. The first one is, what's the uh, oh, C? Okay, remember C is to the left of the two black keys. Okay, the next one was F, which is to the left of the three black keys. Then we had G, which was just after F, the white key after F. Then we had B, which is the white key before C, so the one before the left into the two black notes. Then we had E, and then we got the sharps and flats now. So the first one was D sharp and E flat. Uh, number seven was A sharp and B flat. Um, number eight was F sharp and G flat. Number nine was C sharp and D flat. And the last one was G sharp and A flat. Well done if you got all 15 marks for that, because you can have two marks from numbers 6 to 10. Um, if you've got anywhere near that, really well done. Ultimately, if you've just learned where the white keys are, that's a really good start as well. So well done if you've just got the first five right. If you are getting anything wrong, go back and watch the video and see if you can learn. Maybe watch last week's video and remind yourself on. And there's no problem with just doing this task again after you've watched last week's video. There's no problem with that at all. So today, we're going to look at pitch okay so we've looked at the uh, the notes on the keyboard now when we look at music each note on the keyboard is represented by a letter on a line so um here you can see it starts on an a but it doesn't start on an a but there is an a here if we start from this a we go a b c d e f follow on here go to g 
Um, you'll notice that we don't have a H note on the staff either. That's because every key on the keyboard is represented by a uh, letter or a symbol on the staff, okay, which is this sheet music you see here. The five lines we call a staff. Um, this symbol here, the treble clef, that tells us the range of the instrument. So high pitched instruments we're playing on a treble clef, things like a violin, the trumpet, or even the right hand of your piano when you're playing two handed, the right hand you're playing with will usually be written on the treble clef. Um, so as I've said here, there is no H note, remember that. So A to G, okay, so after this F note, if we were to sit a note on top of the line here where I'm showing you with my mouse, that would be a G note as well. Um, so going up the stave, you'll notice the notes follow the alphabetical order. So if I start from A, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? Please also note that if you're in a space, okay, which is this, um, where the note is between two lines, okay, the next note will be on a line, and that means the line is going through the note, okay? So you'll notice that when A is in a space, B is on the line above it. C is on the space above B, D is on the line above C, okay, and it follows that pattern all the time, okay. And if you go the other way, for example, if you remembered E was this last space, okay, then you could go backwards through the alphabet to work it out. So ultimately, you only need to know where one note is and you can work out the rest, okay. So if you know where that, for example, if you were just to know that E was the bottom line, and you, were to, and you knew that it went line, space, line, space, you could continue going up the musical alphabet. Remember in the musical alphabet, there is no H, and we, after G, we go to A. You could work out where any note was, okay? So if you just knew where E was, you could then work out that the middle line was B by going up, going space is F, the line next line is G, the next space is A, and the final, well, that line will be B. So you could work that out going, doing it that way. There is another way of learning it, okay? So here's a clear picture of line notes and space notes. You can see the line notes have the line going through them. Okay, the space notes have um, are in between two lines. Okay, so you can see that. All right, and we use mnemonics to remember these notes. Okay, so mnemonics are a phrase that helps us remember something. For example, in science with the notes on the rainbow, you'll remember that um, Richard of York gave battle in vain is the mnemonic we use, Richard being red, of being orange, York being yellow, and so on, and it tells us the colour, the colour order of the rainbow. Now it's exactly the same, we use a phrase that we can learn the notes on the lines in music, because that's actually faster than working up from E, if I remembered E was there, I'd have to go E, F, G, you know, there's more notes to count up. If I just know the lines, there is less notes to count up, so E, G, B, D, F, the way I learned it at school was using the phrase, every good boy deserves football. So every being the E, good being the next line, boy being the next line, deserves being the fourth line, and the fifth line being uh, football. So every good boy deserves football. That's how I learned them. Maybe you would like to learn it that way as well. I recommend it because it's a little bit faster than learning it the, old, the other way I've shown you. Uh, as you can see, the notes in the spaces they spelled the word face, okay? And that rhymes, face in the spaces, and that helps us remember that as well, okay? You'll also notice that this space, if it fits in between E and G, well, in between E and G, you would have the letter F, okay? This space here fits in between G and B, okay? So that would be A, because A comes after G in the musical alphabet. So this space in between B and D will be a C, and this one between D and F will be an E, because it follows alphabetical order. Now, if you're unsure about that, you might need to re-watch the video and just try and get your head around it. Sometimes people find it easy to learn it using this um, method and just working out where one note is and then count, um, going up the alphabet, the musical alphabet, to work out the names of the notes. Or some people prefer to learn the mnemonic way and have um, and learn that all the notes in the lines that every good boy deserves football and the notes in the spaces uh, spell the word face. So here's your task, okay. In your Google Classroom assignment, um, where this video was posted, you'll find a link to musictheory.net. Okay, I want you to click that link and return to the video, and I'll show you how to set up that task. So pause this video, open up musictheory.net, and um, I will be here. When you've done that, just press play on the video, and I'll show you what to do next. 
So you've opened up musictheory.net. It will look something like this. Okay, and what you now need to do is click on the exercises button here. And this menu brings up lots of exercises. One of the exercises I might just pop bring your attention to is the keypod note identification okay so if you click on that you'll be asked to know what note of the keyboard like we did in our starter so that's something you could do but that is not today's task today's task is to do note identification so you'll see it'll come up with something like this and it keeps your score here at the top and what your percentage is here now First thing I want you to do is check your settings, okay? Because I only want you to practice the treble clef. If you click on this, there is the bass clef, alto clef, tenor clef, clef, and lots of others as well, okay? I just want to focus you guys on the treble clef. So make sure you've got nothing else selected there, okay? And the next thing is the treble range. What I want you to do is just go to the top line. So you bring the right arrow down. So it's just on the top line, which is our F, and you bring the left arrow up so that the bottom line is on E, okay, so they're just touching the outside lines, all right, that's where our range is that we've been working on, okay, there's nothing else you need to click, so once you click the gears icon, you can then start, okay, and as you can see, right, this first one, we've got F, A, C, E, it's in a space, so space, remember in the space is a spell space, so I've gone for F, no, it's not F, it's not A, it's not C, the last space so it's an E so if I click E I get one out of one and I get a hundred percent it then randomly assigns another note they'll all be different for you okay so this is a line note so every good boy deserves okay so we're on that line it's D it's deserves okay and then I've clicked the next uh, I've got the next one right so that's two out of two I've got a hundred percent what I'd like you to do is do as many as you possibly can okay in the time frame so Basically, don't go over 100. I think 100 is plenty. I would like a minimum of 20 done, okay? But you can continue to do as many as you like to make sure that you have remembered those notes. When you're finished, you're going to take a screenshot of the screen so I can see how many you've done. So 20 is minimum, okay? 100 is maximum. Please don't spend longer than doing 100 um, because you don't need to, all right? But I will be giving positive points to those people who get lots and lots of... Um, high percentages who've done a lot more than 20, I will be giving positive points out for your effort that you have made. Now, to take a screenshot, once you're finished, you're gonna press Control, which is in the bottom left of your keyboard, and print screen. That'll be somewhere near your backspace or your delete button, and that might take some time to find, okay? So, when you're finished doing it, come back and watch the video, listen to me, rewind it so you can hear me explain how to take a screenshot, so you press Control and print screen, and like I say, Control's the bottom left of your keyboard, print screen is above delete or somewhere around there um, and it'll say PRTSC and that's you click them at the same time okay I'll demonstrate it now so I press those buttons now and then I paste it underneath my spiral starter I paste this screenshot to show me how many you have done okay and then we'll return so pause the video do your exercise take the screenshot post it into Google Docs and then come back to the video when you're finished Okay, well done on doing the activity. I think I hope you've done relatively well. Remember, you can always restart that kind of thing as well um, and just do as many as you like. Um, so what I'd like to do underneath your screenshots now, uh, this is the very final thing, is tell me as many reasons as you can as to why you think it's important to learn where the notes are, are where the notes are on sheet music. For example, I've done an example for you there. So I think learning pitch notation is important because I then know which keyboard keys to press to play the right tune. Can you think of any other reasons? There are many, many more. So just list as many reasons as you can. You can use my example, but try and think of some others as well. And main thing is, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope you're staying safe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you when you all come back. So I forgot to... Um, explain how to submit the work so I've just come back to explain that so if you've got a Google Classroom and the assignment you're working on which should say pitch notation um, if you can't find it you can click classwork at the top and find it that way you may also need to click on the title which will say pitch notation and view assignment if you're going that way and on that assignment there'll be a box on the far right that says add or create you need to click that and if you've worked on Google Docs if you click in uh, it should say from drive when you come to upload something or add something um, so if you find that Google Docs file it should be the last one you were working on and you should be able to submit it and when you're done make sure to click turn it in 
okay then i can see and mark it okay so thanks for that and once again stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you when you're back